Good afternoon. I am Colonel Billy Wilson, the commander of basic military training. I'm glad we had this opportunity to uh, have a discussion. So, why are you here? I will tell you that you are here to train both your body and your mind. Be better every day. Be better. You are here to train your body and your mind. Not one or the other, both. I often ask new recruits, why the Air Force? And I often get, well, I want to be part of an institution. I want to be part of something that is larger than myself. Remember why you are here. Remember those people that came before you. Everything that you do needs to come with a passion and a vigor that is unmatched. There will be stress. It will be stressful. And I will tell you that it is stressful by design. So the question remains, when you start feeling stressed out, what are you going to do? Are you going to react? Or are you going to respond? I expect you to respond to the demands that are being placed upon you, pushing you out of your comfort zone, forcing you to grow, because that's why you're here. You're here to be transformed from what you were to what you need to be, to what your nation needs you to be. Each and every one of you will earn your place here. This will not be given to you. And as you earn your place here and head toward graduation day, having earned it, you will have a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. And it will be meaningful to you. And as you depart this place, you will be proud of what you've accomplished. At this time, please find a place to sit. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of our official party. Please remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Morgan. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, on this momentous day when these men and women finally reach their goal of graduating from BMT, we first thank you for all the support that has helped them achieve this moment. From the MTIs who have led and mentored them to all the support staff working behind the scenes and the loved ones cheering them on from a distance. And as these airmen prepare to transition to the next stage of their careers, instill in them a character of integrity, excellence, and service before self so that they may live out the lessons they've learned here at BMT. May you bless them and keep them as you turn your face towards them, being gracious unto them and giving them peace. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony. The Deputy Commander, Air Force Basic Military Training, Lieutenant Colonel Alvin Schultz, Jr. <laughs> the Senior Enlisted Leader, Air Force Basic Military Training, Chief Master Sergeant Dan Anderson. <laughs> the Reviewing Official, the Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategy, Integration and Requirements, Lieutenant General David Harris, accompanied by his wife, Ashley. Also in attendance with us today, the Deputy Commander, Air Education and Training Command, Major General James Sears, Jr., accompanied by his wife, Vicki. <laughs> the 
from the Italian government, Presidency of the Council of Ministers, Brigadier General Ignazio Lax, accompanied by his wife, Chantelle. <laughs> the commander, 37th Training Wing, Colonel Lauren Corshane. <laughs> the command chief, 37th Training Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Carlos Damien. The Deputy Commander, 37th Training Wing, Colonel John O'Dell III. The Commander, 120th Airlift Wing, Montana Air National Guard, Colonel David Smith. The Command Chief, 120th Airlift Wing, Montana Air National Guard, Chief Master Sergeant Amber Westy. The Command Senior Enlisted Leader, National Security Agency, Hawaii, Master Chief Petty Officer Jessica McNeil, accompanied by her husband, Daniel. The Chief Enlisted Manager, Manpower, Organization and Resources Division Headquarters, USAFE, AF Africa, Chief Master Sergeant Tara Thomas, accompanied by her husband, Kyle. Although time does not permit us to introduce all our distinguished guests, the 737th Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to today's ceremony, we would like to recognize our newest military training instructors. These instructors have undergone a rigorous five-month training pathway comprised of formal academic classes and task qualification requirements. They have earned the distinct honor of donning the dark blue campaign hat. From the 321st Training Squadron, Technical Sergeant Justin Miller. From the 324th Training Squadron, Staff Sergeant Danielle Otto. From the 326th Training Squadron, Technical Sergeant Luis Villarreal. From the 326th Training Squadron, Technical Sergeant Christopher Trias.
from the 326th Training Squadron, Technical Sergeant Nicholas Taggart. From the 326th Training Squadron, Technical Sergeant Jessica Contreras. From the 326th Training Squadron, Technical Sergeant Lauren Bussell. At this time, we ask all military training instructors, past and present, to stand in a sign of unity as our newest instructors recite the MTI Pledge. The military training instructor hat that I wear. The symbol of honor, professionalism, integrity, service, and excellence in all I can do. My job is one of the most important in the Air Force, and I will spare no effort to properly prepare The dark blue campaign hat these instructors received today has been the symbol of the MTI Corps since 1974. These instructors will carry on the traditions and esprit de corps of the United States Air Force as they pass on their knowledge to our newest generation of airmen.
Our commander of airmen is Master Sergeant Nicholas Pacheco. Lieutenant General David Harris will review today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the national anthem.
Thank you. Please be seated. Over the last seven and a half weeks, the men and women before you have transformed from civilians into motivated, disciplined warriors with the foundation to serve in the most powerful military the world has ever known. Once they leave basic military training, they will continue on to technical training to learn the skills needed to perform in one of 118 specialties. They will then move on to serve at one of 84 installations around the globe or work directly with our sister services. As they move on to technical training, they will continue to focus on adapting to military requirements, achieving occupational proficiency, and learning how to be highly productive members of the armed forces. These men and women will prepare for increased responsibilities and must ensure they are trained, qualified, and ready to deploy and operate in an expeditionary environment. These graduates are the future of our national defense and will pave the way for the generations that will follow. Seven thirty seventh Training Group, United States Air Force, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. Subject, Commander's Excellence. The Commander's Excellence streamer is awarded to the 326th Training Squadron, Flight 255, for their significant accomplishments demonstrating teamwork, excellence, and esprit de corps during the period of 12 February 2024 to 28 March 2024. Signed, Billy Wilson, Jr., Colonel, United States Air Force. The Commander's... The Commander's Excellence Flight was led by Master Sergeant Justin Beach and Technical Sergeant Louis Villarreal. Officer, 
Of the hundreds of thousands of American citizens that enter the workforce each year, less than 1% have joined the ranks of the United States military. The graduates before you have reached a milestone in their military journey and will require your continued support at, to assist them in their future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of musical honors. Thank you. Please be seated. The graduates passing in review today represent a portion of the 35,000 men and women who will complete basic military training this year. The 737th Training Group provides all recruits the essential military training to become motivated members of the world's greatest Air Force. The military training instructors are responsible for the indoctrination, development, and discipline of the airmen. They have dedicated endless hours to ensure all training objectives are met. Today's graduates have proven through academic studies, military training, physical training, and the development of teamwork that they are ready to take their place in the United States Armed Forces. As our graduates turn left onto the bomb run to pass in review, they will march over the enlisted hero's walk. 
the men and women recognized on the pavers have been awarded our nation's highest honors, representing heroic and unselfish actions as members of the United States military in armed conflict. Their decorations include nine medals of honor, 23 Air Force crosses, and 162 silver stars awarded for bravery during encounters with hostile enemy combatants. These enlisted heroes serve to inspire all service members to execute their duties courageously and with honor in their service to this great nation. We would like to direct your attention to our national, state, and territorial flags. As these flags pass in review, please stand and render the appropriate courtesies for our national flag. As a reminder, military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. We ask that our civilian guests stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may either render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. Once the flags have passed, please be courteous of others and be seated in order to allow all our guests the opportunity to view the flights as they pass in review. Now passing in review from the 433rd Training Squadron, the Commander of Airmen, Master Sergeant Nicholas Pacheco, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown San Antonio, Texas. From the 321st Training Squadron, the A Squadron Staff, led by Technical Sergeant Jordan Carter, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. From the 321st Training Squadron, Flight 245, led by Technical Sergeant Nathan Simon, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Mount Airy, Maryland. Flight 246, led by Staff Sergeant Micah Arabia. Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Eva Beach, Hawaii. Flight 247, led by Technical Sergeant Justin Miller, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Warrensville, North Carolina. Hey. Flight 248, led by Technical Sergeant Sorrell Greer, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Youngstown, Ohio. Flight 249, led by Technical Sergeant Andrew Stein, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Eden Rapids, Michigan. Flight 250, led by Technical Sergeant Jonathan Gwaley, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, North Huntington, Pennsylvania. From the 324th Training Squadron, Flight 251, led by Technical Sergeant John Lynch, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Mobile, Alabama. From the 331st Training Squadron, the Color Guard, led by Technical Sergeant Jacob Bergen, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Hanlington, Iowa. From the 324th Training Squadron, Flight 253 and 254, led by Staff Sergeant Danielle Otto, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, St. Louis, Missouri. Right 
from the 320th Training Squadron, the B Squadron staff, led by Technical Sergeant Matthias Tessero, Military Training Instructor Trainer, hometown Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. From the 324th Training Squadron, Flight 252, led by Technical Sergeant Nicholas Walker, Military Training Instructor, right hometown up. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. From the 326th Training Squadron, PT and Commander's Excellence Flight, Flight 255, led by Technical Sergeant Luis Villarreal, Military Training Instructor, hometown Los Angeles, California. Academic Excellence Flight, Flight 256, led by Technical Sergeant Christopher Trias, Military Training Instructor, hometown Albuquerque, New Mexico. Flight 257, led by Technical Sergeant Jessica Contreras, Military Training Instructor, hometown San Antonio, Texas. Flight 258, led by Technical Sergeant Lauren Bussell, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Atlanta, Georgia. Traditionally, the armed forces are expected to exemplify respect for the nation. Special ceremonies have been established to bestow honor upon the flag and other national symbols. Such ceremonies are usually included in parades, reviews, and similar formations in which large groups of military personnel participate. On special occasions in basic military training, the military training instructors assemble in a mass formation as a sign of recognition and respect. It is the highest honor the MTI Corps can bestow upon an individual. Today's mass has been formed to honor and celebrate the contributions women have made within the armed forces and recognize the specific achievements women have made over the course of American history. Receiving today's mass is the commander of the 37th Training Wing, Colonel Lauren Corshane. Ladies and gentlemen, now approaching the reviewing stand is the backbone of the basic military training mission and a direct representation of the female contribution to basic military training. This women's mass is being led by Chief Master Sergeant Valerie Andrade, Master Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Guayaquil, Ecuador. The women of the 737th Training Group offer this symbolic gesture of respect to all women who have served in the federal government. We thank you for your sacrifices and contributions that have served to strengthen this great nation throughout history.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing and singing of the United States Air Force song. Thank you. You may be seated. Musical support for this morning's ceremony has been provided by the airmen from the 321st Training Squadron, performing under the direction of Technical Sergeant Matthew Zettelmoyer, military training instructor, hometown Augusta, Georgia. These individuals have been hand-selected to perform for today's ceremony. In addition to completing all basic military training, syllabus, and training requirements, Drum and Bugle Corps members commit additional training hours for practice throughout their weeks of training. Their extra effort and commitment demonstrate teamwork and the Air Force's core value, service before self. With each Drum and Bugle Corps performance, they honor the long-standing tradition of live music at formal military ceremonies. We would like to take a moment to congratulate all of our honor graduates as well as their families. Basic military training honor graduates distinguish themselves by being ranked in the top 10% of all graduates in their class. The exceptional personal dedication, integrity, service before self, and sustained excellence they displayed throughout basic military training earned them this outstanding distinction. As the flights march forward for the oath of enlistment, we would like to thank all of the families and friends who are here in support of those graduating today for your support to our mission and the greatest air power the world has ever known. Your words of encouragement have helped motivate these graduates through seven and a half weeks of basic military training. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General David Harris will now come forward and address our graduating class. Well, good morning and welcome. What a wonderful day. It is so nice to see so many people out here today. What a difference from yesterday in the coining ceremony, right? All that rain, I guess it is true that just wait a minute, the 
weather in Texas will change for you and change for the better today as we are honoring 605 of our basic military graduates today and their graduation. How about a round of applause? You know, seven and a half weeks ago, you entrusted your nation, or your children, your sons, your daughters into our nation's most valuable military service, the United States Air Force. We thank you for that. Your support has pushed these airmen to a successful, successfully complete the basic training that we needed for the world's greatest Air Force. I want to take this opportunity, first and foremost, to say thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your encouragement. But most of all, thank you for your trust, trusting in these military training instructors to make them the best that they could possibly be. Like many of you here today, to support your loved one, I'm not just here as a general representing most senior leaders of our Air Force, I'm also here as a proud father. I have the honor to give the oath of enlistment to many of these individuals, including my son. Family, of course, extends beyond the literal sense. It also goes into the metaphorical. As airmen, you're joining the world's best military. This career will take you far and wide, far and wide. Your natural talents, your spirit, your teamwork, all of this to maintain a cutting, war-fighting edge. Within the Directorate of Strategy, uh, back at the Pentagon where I work, we execute analysis for the broader Air Force. We answer tough questions like how do we prepare both training and the right tools for the airmen that they received over the past seven weeks. Hopefully this training is going to take them into the next five, ten, even twenty years and allow them to succeed and be the voice of tomorrow's airmen. The character that's, of conflict that's going on right now, the changing nature of war, that's a little bit about what I want to talk today about. Our global competitors are changing rapidly. They're advancing their technology and altering their approaches in the way that we've never confronted before. So how are we going to respond? The answer is that we're adapting. The trainer, everybody that you saw today here, adapted and transformed these graduates into tomorrow's war fighting force. What we really need to do is take these airmen, integrate them into the rest of the Air Force, and they'll do this with their follow-on training. Even during their time in basic training, the Air Force begun to work on some major changes that will be felt for decades to come. This change is long overdue. What does this mean for you and the airmen that are behind me? The interpretation is this. I recognize that there's strength in our heritage and that we're able to appreciate the hard work, dedication, and the bright ideas of all those that came before us. You stand on the shoulders of giants, the ones that have marched on this parade field before you and that you get to march on today. We have to take those lessons, adapt them, and make them valuable for tomorrow's fight. I also see an Air Force that's a little bit older. It's modernizing. You're going to work on the most technically advanced, competent machines, but I got to tell you, it's more about the machines. It's less about the machines and more about you. It's more about the way you think. It's more about the training that you went through and what that's going to bring to tomorrow's Air Force. I want to be clear that as I continue to represent the voice of, the air, of tomorrow's airmen, I'll be continuing to look to you and your fellow airmen for those great ideas, for those insights, for that innovation. We fully recognize that the best and brightest come from you, comes from our nation. It's an exciting time to be an airman. I'm proud of each and every one of you. As we send you off to their units and you look to see where, wherever it is that you're going to be assigned, I want to just say first, foremost, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for the contributions that you're about ready to make for our country. Now I have just one question for you. Are you prepared to join the ranks of the world's greatest Air Force? They're ready. Thank you, General Harris. Please stand as Lieutenant General David Harris will now administer the oath of enlistment. Instructors, place your flights at attention. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear or affirm. 
that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And of the officers appointed over me. According to the regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Congratulations, Airmen, and welcome to the world's greatest Air Force. Thank you, General Harris. Please remain standing while our graduates recite the Airmen's Creed and for the departure of the official party. I am an American Airman. As a reminder, military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute as the U.S. flags pass. We ask that our civilian guests stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may either render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. Once the flags have passed, please be courteous of others and be seated in order to allow all our guests the opportunity to view the flights as they pass.